Lysistrata stands alone with the Propylia at her back. If they were trysting for a bacchanal, a feast of Pan or Coleus or Gen Genitalis, the tambourines would block the ratty streets. But now there's not a woman to be seen, except, ah yes, this neighbor of mine yonder. Enter Kalanike. Good day, Kalanike. Good day, Lysistrata. But what has vexed you so? Tell me, child. What are these black looks for? It doesn't suit you to knit your eyebrows up so glumly like that. Kalanike, it's more than I can bear. I'm hot all over with blushes for our sex. Men say we're slippery rogues. And aren't they right? Yet some have done the most tremendous business for deliberation. Still they snuggle in bed. My dear, they'll come. It's hard for women, you know, to get away. There's so much to do. Husbands to be patted and put in good tempers. Servants to be poked out. Children washed or soothed with lilies or fed with mouthfuls of pet. But I tell you, here's a far more weighty subject. What is it all about, my dear Lysistrata, that you've called the women hither in a troop? What kind of object is it? A tremendous thing. And long? Indeed, it may be very lengthy. Then why aren't they here? No man's connected with it. If that was the case, they'd soon come fluttering along. No, no. It concerns an object I've felt over and turned this way and that for sleepless nights. It must be fine to stand such a long tension. So fine it comes to this. Grease saved by woman. By woman? Wretched thing, I'm sorry for it. Our country's fate is henceforth in our hands, to destroy the Peloponnesian's root and branch. What could be nobler? Wipe out the boy oceans. No, utterly. Have mercy on the eels. But with regard to Athens, note I'm careful not to say any of these nasty things. Still, thought is free. But if the women join us from Peloponnesus and Boeotia, then hand in hand we'll rescue Greece. How could we do such a big wise deed, we women who dwell quietly adorning ourselves in a black room with gowns of lucid gold and gaudy toilets of stately silk and dainty little slippers? These are the very armaments of the rescue, these crocus gowns, this outlay of the best myrrh, slippers, cosmetics dusting beauty, and robes with rippling creases of light. Yes, but how? No man will lift a lance against another. I'll run to have my tunics dyed from the locus. Or take a shield. I'll get a stately gown. Or unscoured a sword. Let me buy a pair of slippers. Now tell me, are the women right to lag? They should have turned birds. They should have grown wings and flown. My friend, you'll see that they are true Athenians. Always too late. Why, there's not a woman from the shoreward deems arrived, not one from Salamis. I know for certain they awoke at dawn and got their husbands off, it, not their boat sails. And I have staked my life the Acarnian dames would be here first, yet they haven't come either. Well, anyhow, there's Theogenes' wife. We can expect she consulted Hecate. But look, here are some at last, and more behind them. See, where are they from? From Gira they come. Yes, they generally manage to come first. Enter Marine. Are we late, Lysistrata? What is that? Nothing to say? I've not much to say to you, Marine, darling, and so vast an affair. I couldn't find my girdle in the dark. What if the affair so wonderful? Tell us, what is it? Now let us stay a little longer to tell the Peloponnesian girls and the girls of Boycotia are here to listen. That's the best advice. Ah, there comes Lampito. Enter Lampito. Welcome, Lampito, dear Spartan girl with a delightful face, washed with the rosy spring. How fresh you look in the easy stride of your sleek slenderness. Why, you could strangle a bull. I think I could. It's for exercise and kicking high behind. What lovely breasts to own. Ooh, your fingers. Assess them, ye tickler. With such tender tracks I feel as if I were an altar victim. Who is this youngster? A boy ocean lady. There never was much undergrowth in Boyosha. Such a smooth place, and this girl takes after it. Yes, I never saw a skin so primly kept. This girl? A sonsy, open-looking Jinka. She's a Corinthian. Yes, isn't she very open, in some ways particularly. But who's got this council of women to meet here? I have. Propound, then, what you want to us. What is the amazing news you have to tell? 
I'll tell you. But first, answer one small question. As you like. Are you not sad your children's fathers go endlessly off soldiering afar in this plotting war? I am willing to wager there is not one here whose husband is at home. Mine's been in Thrace keeping an eye on Eucrates for five months past. And mine left me for Pylos seven months ago at least. And as for mine, no sooner has he slipped up fray the line, he straps his shield and he snicks off again. And not the slightest glimmer of a lover. Since the Malaysians betrayed us, I have not seen the image of a single upright man to be a marble consolation to us. Now will you help me if I find a means to stamp the war out? By the two goddesses, yes. I will, though I pine this very dress and drink the barter money the same day. And I too, though, am split up like a turban and half is hacked off at the price of peace. And I too. Why, to get a peep at the shy thing, I clamber up to the tip top of Targetus. Then I'll expose my mighty mystery. O oh, women, if we could compel the men to bow to peace, we must refrain. From what, O oh, tell us? Will you truly do it then? We will, we will, if we must die for it. We must refrain from every depth of love. Why do you turn your backs? Where are you going? Why do you bite your lips and shake your heads? Why are your faces blanched? Why do you weep? Will you or won't you? Or what do you mean? No, I won't do it. Let the war proceed. No, I won't do it. Let the war proceed. You too, dear Turbot. You that said just now you don't mind being split right up in the least. Anything else? Oh, bid me walk in fire, but do not rob us of the darling joy. What else is like it, dearest the sister does? And you? Oh, please, give me the fire instead. Lewd to the least drop in the tiniest vein. Our sex is filthy food for tragic poets. Our whole life's but a pile of kisses and babies. But, hearty Spartan, if you will join me, all may be righted yet. Oh, help me, help me. It's a sad, sad thing to ask of us by the toi. Alas, to sleep her lane and never feel love's lack except with makeshifts. But let it be, peace, ma, and be thought of first. My friend, my friend, the only one amid this herd of weaklings. But if, which heaven forbid, we should refrain as you would have us, how is peace induced? By the two goddesses. Now can't you see all we have to do is idly sit indoors with smooth roses powdered in our cheeks? Our bodies burning naked through the folds of shining Morgoth silk, and meet the men with our dear Venus plaits plucked trim and neat. Their stirring love will rise up furiously. They'll beg our arms to open. That's our time. We'll disregard their knocking, beat them off, and they will soon be rabid for a piece. I'm sure of it. Just as Menelaus, they say, seeing the bosom of his naked Helen fling down the sword. But we'll be tearful fools if our husbands take us at our word and leave us. There's only left then, in Ferocrates' phase, to flay a skin dog, flay more our flayed desires. Bah, proverbs will never warm us celibate. But what avail we or scheme be if the men drag us for all our kicking onto the couch? Cling to the doorposts. But if they should force us? Yield then, but with a sluggish cold indifference. There is no joy to them in sullen mating. Besides, we have other ways to madden them. They cannot stand up long, and they have no delight unless we fit their aim with merry sucker. Well, if you must have it so, we'll all agree. For us, I have no doubt. We can persuade our men to strike a fair and decent peace. But how will you pitch out the battle frenzy, O the Athenian populace? I promise you, we'll wither up that curse. I don't believe it. Not while they own in Trirum, oared and rigged, or those stocks and stocks and stocks of Scylla. I've thought the whole thing out, there's no flaw. We shall surprise the Acropolis today. That is the duty set out the older Danes. While we sit here talking, they are to go and under pretense of sacrificing, seize it. Carity, that's fine. All's working for the best. Now quickly, then, Pito, let us tie ourselves to this high purpose as tightly as the hemp of words can knot together. Set out the terms in detail, and we'll swear to them. Of course. Well then, where is our Siphonus? Why are you staring? First lay the shield, boss downward, on the floor, and bring the victims inwards. 
But the sister does. What is this oath that we're to swear to? What oath? In the scales, they take a slaughtered sheep and swear upon a buckler. Why not we? Oh, the sister does. Peace sworn on a buckler. What oath would suit us then? Something burden bearing would be our best insignia. A white horse. Let's swear upon its entrails. A horse indeed. Then what will symbolize us? This, as I tell you. First set a great dark bowl upon the ground, and disembowel a skin of Thasian wine. Then swear that we'll not add a drop of water. Ah, what eighth could clink pleasanter than that? Bring me a bowl, then, and a skin of wine. My dear, see what a splendid bowl it is. I'd not say no if asked to sip it off. Put down the bowl. Lay hands all on the victim. Skyy queen who giveth the last word in arguments, and thee, O bowl, dear comrade, we beseech. Accept our ablation and be proprietous to us. What healthy blood, la, how it gushes out. And what a leeson fragrance through the air. Now, dears, if you will let me, I'll speak first. Only if you draw the lot by Aphrodite. So, grasp the brim, you, Lampito, and all. You, Kalanike, repeat for the rest each word I say. Then you must take the oath and pledge your arms to the same stern conditions. To husband or lover, I'll not open arms. To husband or lover, I'll not open arms. Though love and denial may enlarge his charms. Though love and denial may enlarge his charms. Oh, oh, my knees are failing me, Le Sister Duff. But still at home, ignoring him, I'll stay. But still at home, ignoring him, I'll stay. Beautiful, clad in saffron silks all day. Beautiful, clad in saffron silks all day. If then he seizes me by dint of force, if then he seizes me by dint of force, I'll give him reason for a long remorse. I'll give him reason for a long remorse. I'll never lie and stare up at the ceiling. I'll never lie and stare up at the ceiling. Nor like a lion on all fours go kneeling. Nor like a lion on all fours go kneeling. If I keep faith, then bounteous cups be mine. If I keep faith, then bounteous cups be mine. If not, to nauseous water change this wine. If not, to nauseous water change this wine. Do you all swear to this? We do, we do. Then I shall immolate the drink the victim thus. She drinks. Here now, share fair. Haven't we made a pact? Let's all quaff down that friendship in our turn. Hark, what counterwelling hubbub is that? As I told you, the women have appropriated the citadel. So, Lampito, dash off to your own land and raise the rebels there. These will serve as hostages, while we ourselves take our places in the ranks and drive the bolts right home. But won't the men march against us? And what if they do? No threat shall creak our hinges wide, no torch shall light a fear in us. We will come out to peace alone. That's it, by Aphrodite, as of old let us seem hard and obdurate. Lampito and some go off. The others go up into the Acropolis. Chorus of old men enter to attack the captured Acropolis. Make room, Drages, move ahead. Why your shoulders chafed, I see. With lugging up hill these locked branches of the olive tree. How upside down and wrong way round the long life sees things grow. Ah, Strimidorus, who'd have thought affairs could tangle so? The women whom we only fed, like witless fools with fostering bread, have impiously come to this. They've stolen the Acropolis, with bolts and bars our orders flout and shut us out. Come, Philurgus, bustle thither, lay our faggots on the ground, in neat stacks, laboring the insurgents all round. And the vile conspiratresses, plotters of such mischief dire, pile and burn them all together in one vast and righteous pyre. Fling down our hands, like comes white to fry in the thickest fire. By Demeter, they'll get no brag, while I got a vein to beat. Cleomenes himself was hurled out in sore defeat. His stiff back Spartan pride was bent. Out, stripped of all his arms, he went. A pygmy cloak that would not stretch to hide his rump, the dragged wretch, still sprouting years of beard, the spilth of six years' filth. 
that was a siege. Our men were ranged in lines of seventeen deep before the gates, and never left their posts there, even to sleep. Shall I not smite the rash presumption then of foes like these, detested both of all the gods in the Euripides? Else may the marathon play not boast my trophied victories. Ah, now there's but a little space to reach the place. A deadly climb it is, a treacherous road with all its bumping load. A pack ass soon would tire. How those logs bruise my shoulders. Further still, jog up the hill and off the fire inside. Or just as we reach the top, we'll find it's died. Ah, feel I choke with smoke. Lord Heracles, how acrid hot. Out of the pot, this mad dog smoke leaps, worrying me and biting angrily. Tis a Lemnian fire that smokes, or else it would not sting my eyelids thus. Haste, all of us, if Athens invokes our aid. Lackeys, now or never the salt must be made. Ah, phew, I choke with the smoke. Thank to the gods, the fire peeps up and crackles as it should. Now why not first slide off our backs these weary loads of wood, and dip a fine branch in the brazier till it glows, then straight hurl it at a battering ram against the stubborn gate? If they refuse to draw the bolts in immediate compliance, we'll set a fire to the wood, and the smoke will strangle their defiance. Phew, what a spluttering drench of smoke. Come now from off my back. Is there no Samos general to help me to unpack? Ah, there, that's over. For the last time now has galled my shoulder. Flare up thine embers, brazen and dutifully smolder, to kindle a brand that I the first may strike the citadel. Aid me, lady, the victory that at the triumph trophy may tell. How we did anciently this insane audacity quell. What's that rising yonder? That ruddy glare, that smoky scurry? Oh, is it something in a blaze? Quick, 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 my comrades, hurry! Nico DK, Helter Skelter, our poor Caligae's in flames, and Cradleus stifled in the welter. Oh, these dreadful old men and their dark laws of hate. There, I'm all of a tremble as I turn out to be too late. I can scarcely get near to the spring that I rose before dawn. What with the tattling of tongues and rattling of pitchers and one jostling din, with slaves pushing in, still there here at last the water's drawn, and with it eagerly I run, to help those of my friends who stand in danger of being burned alive. For I am told a trembling band of greybeards howl to the field, great faggots in each pausing hand, as, as if a hot bath to prepare, and threatening that I will drive these wicked women or soon leaving the shattering into ashes there. O oh, goddess, suffer not, I pray, this harsh deed to be done, but show us Greece and Athens with their warlike acts repealed. For this alone, in this I hold, thou goddess with the helm of gold, we lay hands on thy sanctuary, a queen, then our ally be, and with they cast their fires of slaughter, direct our water. Let me go! You fill this woman in, what was this you do? No, no honest man, no, no pious man could do, do such things, things to you. Ah, uh, here is something most original, I have no doubt. A swarm of women sentinels to man the walls without. So then we scare you, do we? Do you see the fearful host? You only see the smallest fraction mustered at this post. Oh, fainters, shall we not stop to all these chattering tricks? Suppose that now upon their backs we splintered these our sticks. 
Let us lay down the pitcher so our bodies will be free. In case these zombie fellows try to cause some injury. Oh, hit them hard and hit them again and hit them until they run away. And perhaps they'll learn, like Bopolis, not to have too much to say. Come on then, do it. I won't budge, but look at all I'll bite it. And every little scrap of meat that dangles in my sight. Be quiet or I'll bash you out of it in years to come. Now you just touch Stratilus with the top joint of your thumb. What with vengeance can you take if with my fists your face I beat? I'll rip you with my teeth and strew your entrails at your feet. Now I appreciate your remedy's strange subtlety. Woman is the most shameless beast of all the beasts that be. Rookity, come and let's pick up our water jars once more. Ah, uh, cursed drab, what have you brought this water for? What is your fire for then, you smelly corpse, yourself to burn? To build a pyre and make your comrades ready for the urn. And I have water to put out your fire immediately. What? You put out my fire? Yes, sir, as soon as you'll see. I don't know why I hesitate to roast you with this flame. If you, you have, have it in soap, you'll go off cleaner than you came. came. Clear, you dirty slut. A nuptial bath in which to lie. Did you hear that, insolence? I'm a free woman, I. I'll make you hold your tongue. Henceforth, you'll serve in no more juries. Burn off her hair for me. Now, now forward, water quench their furies. Oh dear, oh dear. So, was, was it hot? Hot? Enough, oh, oh, hold. Water, perhaps you'll be moon again. Why not? Ver, I'm wriggled up from shivering with the cold. Next time you fire, you'll warm yourself and leave us to our lot. Magistrate enters with attendant, Scythians. Have the luxurious rights of the women glittered their libertine show, their drumming tapped out crowds, the Zabazian mysteries summoned their mob, Donis been wept to death on the terraces, as I could hear the last day in the assembly? For Demostratus, that bad luck befoul him, was roaring, we must sail for Sicily, while a woman, throwing herself about in a dance lopsided with drink, was shrilling out, Adonis, woe for Adonis! Then Demostratus shouted, we must levy hoplites at Zacynthus, and there the women, up to the ears in wine, was screaming, weep for Adonis on the housetop. The scoundrelly politician, that lunatic ox, bellowing bad advice through topsy shrieks. Such are the follies wantoning in them. Oh, okay. if you knew their full effrontery, all the insults they've done, besides sousing us with water from their pots to our public disgrace. For we stand here wringing our clothes like grown-up infants by Poseidon, justly done. For in part with us the blame must lie for dissolute behavior, and for the pampered appetites they learn. Thus grows the seedling lust to blossoming. We go into a shop and say, Here, goldsmith, you remember the necklace that you wrought my wife? Well, the other night, in fervor of a dance, her clasp broke open. Now I'm off for Salamis. If you've the leisure, would you go tonight and stick a bolt pin into her opened clasp? Another goes to a cobbler, a soldierly fellow, always standing up erect, and says to him, Cobbler, the sandal stop of my wife's pinches her, hurts her little toe in a place where she's sensitive. Come at noon and see if you can stretch out wider this thing that troubles her, loosen its tightness. And so you view the result. Observe my case. I, a magistrate, come here to draw money to buy oar blades, and what happens? The women slam the door full in my face, but standing still is no use. Bring me a crowbar and I'll chastise this, their impertinence. What do you keep at, wretch, with dazzled eyes? Peering for a tavern, I suppose. Come, force the gates with crowbars, prize them apart. I'll prize away myself, too. 
The Sistrata appears. Stop this banging. I'm coming of my own accord. Why bars? It is not bars we need, but common sense. Indeed, you slut. Where is the archer now? Arrest this woman. Tie her hands behind her. If he brushes me with a finger by Artemis, the public menial, he'll be sorry for it. Are you afraid? Grab her about the middle, two of you, then. Lay hands on her and end it. By Pendrasus' eye, if your hand touches her, I'll spread you out and trample on your guts. My guts? Where is the other archer gone? Bind that minx there who talks so prettily. By Prosper, if your hand moves out her way, you better have a search in somewhere handy. You too? Where is that archer? Take that woman. I'll put a stop to these surprise parties. By the Tauric Artemis, one inch nearer my fingers, and it's a bald man that'll be yelling. Tut, tut, what's here? Deserted by my archers? But surely women never can defeat us. Close up your ranks, my Scythians. Forward at them. By the goddesses, you'll find that here await you four companies of most pugnacious women, armed cap of pie from the topmost lowering curl to the lowest angry dimple. On, Scythians, bind them! On, gallant allies of our high design, vendors of grain eggs, pulse and vegetables, ye garlic tavern keepers of bakeries, strike, batter, knock, hit, slap, and scratch our foes. Be finally imprudent. Say what you think of them. Enough! Retire and do not rob the dead. How beastly did my archer force come off? Aha! You thought it was a herd of slaves you had to tackle, and you didn't guess the thirst for glory ardent in our blood. By Apollo, I know well the thirst that heats you, especially when a wineskin's close. You waste, waste your breath, breath dear magistrate. I fear in answering back. What's the, the good, good of arguing with such a rampageous pack? Remember how they washed us down, these very clothes I wore, with water that looked nasty and that smelt so even more. What else to do since you have been too dangerously nigh? If you should do the same again, I will punch you in the eye. Though I must stay at home and most a quiet life enjoy, polite to all and every corner naturally coy. Still, if you play a wasp's nest, then of wasps you must beware. How may this ferocity be tamed? It grows too great to bear. Let us question them and find if they'll perchance declare the reason why they strangely dare to seize on Cranimal Citadel, this ivory inaccessible, this shrine above the precipice, the Acropolis. Probe them and find what they mean with this idle talk. Listen, but watch they don't try to deceive. You'll be neglecting your duty most certainly if now this mystery unknown you leave. Women there, tell what I asked you directly. Come without rambling, I wish you to state what's your rebellious intention in barring up thus on our noses our own temple gate. To take first the treasury out of your management, and so stop the war through the absence of gold. Is gold, then, the cause of the war? Yes, gold caused it and miseries more, too many to be told. T'was for money, and money alone, that Pisander, with all of the army of mob agitators, raised up revolutions. But as for the future, it won't be worthwhile to set up to be traitors. Not an owl they'll get as their loot. Not an owl. While we have this treasure chest in our command. What, then, is that you propose? Just this, merely to take the exchequer henceforth in hand. The exchequer? Yes, why not? Of our capabilities, you have had various clear evidences. Firstly, remember, we have always administered soundly the budget of all home expenses. But this matter's different. How is it different? Why, it deals chiefly with wartime supplies. But we abolish war straight by our policy. What will you do if emergencies arise? Face them our own way. What? You will? Yes, we will. Then there's no help for it. We're all destroyed. No, willy-nilly, you must be safeguarded. What madness is this? Why, it seems you're annoyed. It must be done, that's all. Such awful oppression never, oh, never in the past yet, my boar. You must be saved, sir. 
There's all there is to it. If we don't want to be saved? All the more. Why do you women come prying and meddling in matters of state, touching war, time, and peace? That I will tell you. Oh, tell me quickly, or I'll... Harp in a while, and from threatening cease. I cannot! I cannot! It's growing too insolent. Come on, you fine woman, do we have to dread? Stop from your croaking old carrion crow there. Continue. Be calm, then, and I'll go ahead. All the long years when the hopeless war dragged along, we, unassuming, forgotten and quiet, endured without question, endured in our loneliness, all your incessant child's antics and riot. Our lips we kept tied, though acting with silence, though well all the while in our silence we knew how wretchedly everything still was progressing by listening dumbly the day long to you. For always at home you continued discussing the war and its politics loudly, and we sometimes would ask you, our hearts deep with sorrowing, though we spoke lightly, though happy to see. What's to be inscribed on the side of the treaty stone? What, dear, was said in the assembly today? Mind your own business, he'd answer me growly. Hold your tongue, woman, or else go away. And so I would hold it. I'd not, not be silent, silent for any man living on earth. earth. No, no, not I. Not for a staff. Well, so I did nothing but sit in the house, feeling dreary and sigh. Will ever arrive some fresh tale of decisions more foolish by far and presaging disaster. Then I would say to him, Oh, dear husband, why still do they rush on destruction the faster? At which he would look at me sideways, exclaiming, Keep for your web and your shuttle your care. Or for some hours hence your cheeks will be sore and hot. Leave us alone, for war is man's sole affair. By Zeus, but a man of fine sense he. How sensible, you dotard, because he at no time had lent his intractable ears to absorb from our counsel one temperate word of advice kindly meant. But when at the last in the streets we heard shouted, everywhere singing the ominous cry, is there no one to help us, no savior in Athens, and no, there's no one, came back in reply. At once a convention of all wives through Hellas there was here for a serious purpose was held, to determine how husbands might get back to wisdom, despite their reluctance in time be compelled. Why then delay any longer? It's settled. For the future you'll take up your old occupation. Now in turn you're to hold tongue as we did, and listen while we show the way to recover the nation. You? Talk to us? Why, you're mad. I'll not stand it. Cease babbling, you fool. Till I end, hold your tongue. If I should take orders from one who wears veils, may my neck straightway be deservedly wrung. Oh, if that keeps pestering you, I've a veil here for your hair. I'll fit you out in everything as is only fair. Here's a spindle. That will do. I'll add a wool basket, too. Girdled now, sit humbly at home, munching beans while you card wool and comb. For war now on is the women's affair. Come on then, down, pictures all, and now, courageous of heart, and in our comradely venture, each taking her due part. I could dance, 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 and be fresher after. I could dance away numberless sons, to no weariness let my knees bend. Earth I could brave with laughter, Having such wonderful girls here to friend. Oh, the daring, the gracious, the beautiful ones, their courage unswerving and witty, will rescue our city. Oh, sprung from the seed of most valiant womb grandmothers, scions of savage and dangerous metals, prepare for the battle all. Gird up your anchors, on our way the wind of sweet victory settles. O tender heiress and lady of Cyprus, some flush of beauty I pray you devise to flash on our bosoms and, O oh, I, Aphrodite, rosily gleam on our valorous thighs. Joy will rise up its head through the legions warring and all of the far serried ranks of mad love, bristle the earth to the pillared horizon, pointing in vain to the heavens above. I think that perhaps then they'll give us our title, Peacemakers. What do you mean? Please explain. First, we'll not see you now flourishing arms about into the marketplace playing again. No, no by the Pantheon. 
Still, I can conjure them as past where the herbs stand or the crockery sold by Korriban's jingling Torsats, fully armored, then noisily round on their promenade strolled. And rightly, that's discipline. They... But what's sillier than to go on an errand of buying a fish carrying along an immense gorgon buckler instead of the usual platter or dish? A phylark I lately saw, mounted on a horseback, dressed for the part with long ringlets and all, stole in his helmet the oblet, omelet brought steaming from an old woman who kept a food stall. Nearby a soldier, a Thracian, was shaking wildly his spear like Tyrius in the play to frighten a fig girl while unseen the ruffian filched from her fruit trays the ripest away. How, may I ask? Will your rule re-establish order and justice in lands so tormented? Nothing is easier. Out with it speedily. What is this plan that you boast you've invented? If, when yarn we are winding, it chances to tangle, then, as perchance you may know, through the skein, this way and that, still the spool we keep passing till it is finally clear all again. So to untangle the war and its errors, ambassadors out on all sides we will send, this way and that, here, there, and round about, soon you will find that the war has an end. So... With these trivial tricks of the household, domestic analogies of threads, skeins, and spools, you think that you will solve such a bitter complexity, unwind such political problems, you fools? Well, first, as we wash dirty wool so as to cleanse it, so with a pitiless zeal we'll scrub through the whole city for all greasy fellows, furs too, the parasites, off we will rub. That venomous plague of incessant place seekers soon between thumb and forefinger will crack. All who inside Athens' walls will have their dwelling in one great common basket will pack. Disenfranchised are citizens, allies or aliens, pell now the lot of them, and we will squeeze. Till they discover humanity's meaning, as for disjointed and far colonies, them you must never from this time imagine as scattered about just like lost hanks of wool. Each portion will take and wide into the center, inward to ash, and Athens each loyalty pull, till from the vast heap where all's piled together at last can be woven a strong cloak of state. How terrible it is to stand here and watch them carding and winding at will with our fate, witless in war as they are. What of us, then, who ever in vain for our children must weep, born but to perish afar and in vain? Not that. Oh, let that one memory sleep. Then while we should be company still merrily, happy as brides may, the live long night, kissing youth by, we are forced to lie single, but leave for a moment a pitiful plight. It hurts even more to behold the poor maiden's helpless wrinkling in staler virginity. Does not a man age? Not in the same way. Not as a woman grows withered, grows he. He, when returned from the war, though gray-haired, yet, if he wishes, can choose out a wife. But she has no solid safe peering for omens, wretched and lonely, the rest of her life. But the old man will often select... Oh, why not finish and die? A buyer is easy to buy. A honey cake I'll need you with joy. This garland will see your debt. I have a wreath for you, too. I also will fillet you. What more is lacking? Step aboard the boat. See, Karen shouts ahoy. If you're keeping him, he wants to shove a plate. Outrageous insults. Thus my place to flout. Now to my fellow magistrates I'll go, and what you've perpetrated on me show. What are you blaming us for laying you out? Assure yourself we'll not forget to take the third day offering early for your sake. Magistrate retires. Lysistrata returns within. All men who call your loins your own, awake at last, arise and strip to stand in readiness. For as it seems to me, some more perilous offensive in their heads than they now devise. I'm sure a tyranny, like that of Hideous, in this I detect. They mean to put asunder themselves, I suspect, and that the Laconians assembling at in his house have played a trick to war and provoked them madly to raid the treasury, in which term I include the pay for my food. For is it not preposterous they should talk this way to us on a subject such as battle? 
and, and women, women as they, they are about bronze bucklers their prattle make, make alliance with the spartans people i for one like very hungry wolves but always most sincere shun some, Some dirty game is up their sleeve, I believe. A tyranny, no doubt, but they won't catch me, that I know. Henceforth on my guard I'll go, a sword with myrtle branches breathe forever in my hand, and under arms in the public space I'll take my watchful stand, shoulder to shoulder with their estagata, now my staff I'll draw and start at once by knocking that shocking hag upon the jaw. Your own mother will not know you when you get back to the town. But first, my friends and allies, let us lay these garments down. And all ye fellow citizens, hark to me while I tell, and for what ye have been well. Just as is right, for I have been a sharer in all of the splendor of the city. I bore the holy vessels at seven, then I pounded barley at the age of ten, and clad in yellow robes soon after this, I was a little bear to Barone and Artemis, then necked up with figs. Grown tall and pretty, I was a basket bearer, and so sorry as I should give you advice that I think good, the very best I can. I should not prejudice my voice that I am not a horrible man. If I say something advantageous to the present situation, for I am taxed too, and as this will provide men for the nation, while miserable graybeards, you, it is true, contribute nothing of any importance, whatever to our needs. But the treasure raised against the means, you squandered and do nothing in return, save that you make our lives and persons hazardous by some imbecile mistakes. What would you answer? Now be careful, don't arouse my sight, or will my sister take you napping? Faces slack and left and right. What villainies they contrive! Come, let vengeance fall. You that below the waist are still alive. Off with your tunics at my call. Make it all. For a man must strip to battle like a man. No quaking, brave steps taking. Careless what's ahead. White, white shoes in the nude, onward bold. All you garrisoned like Cedron of old. Let each one wag as youthful as he can, and if he has the cause at heart, rise at least a span. We must take a stand and keep to it, for if we yield the smallest bit to their importunity, then nowhere from their inroads will be left to us immunity. But they'll be building ships, and soon their navies will attack us, as Artemisia did, and seek to fight us and as to sack us. And if they mount, the night they'll rob of a job, for everyone knows how talented they all are in this saddle. Having long practiced how to straddle, no matter how their jogs are up and down, they're never thrown. Then think of Miron's paintings, and each horse back to Amazon, in combat hand to hand with men. Come, on these women's fall, and in pierced wood collars let stick quick the necks of one and all. Don't cross me or I'll lose the beast that's kindled here. And as soon as you howl with howling shivers, howling out with fear, but my dear, strip also that women may battle unhindered. But to you, you'll be too sore to eat garlic more, or one on black bean. I really mean, so grace my spleen to keep you black and blue with wings, my dangerous legs. I'll hash the law of you, if my rage you dash on, the way the relentless beetle hash the eagle's eggs. Scornfully aside I set every silly old man threat, while I he goes with me, O oh, dearest Menia, the noble Theban girl, 
then let to free my motley pile upon decree. In vain will we heal our neighbors. You have used our world of abomination by your suffering neighbor. To take a peace by yesterday went. All I sent to our neighbors in Boisha, asking as a gift to me for them to pack immediately that darling dainty thing, a good fat eel and mint, of course. They refused because of idiotic gold decrees in force. Oh, this strange passion for decrees nothing on earth can check. Till someone sucks a foot out of tripping you and slipping you right to your neck. The sister enters in dismay. Dear, Dear mistress of our commercial enterprise, why do you come so sorrow in your eyes? Oh, tis our naughty femininity, so weak in one spot, that hath saddened me. What's, What's this? this? Please speak. Poor women, oh, so weak. What, what can it be? Surely your friends may know. know. Yea, I must speak it, though it hurt me so. Speak, speak me, can we help? help? Don't stand there musing need. I'll blurt it out then. Our women's armies mutinied. Oh, oh Zeus. Zeus! What use is Zeus to our anatomy? Here's the gaping calamity I meant. I cannot shut their ravenous appetites a moment more now. They're all deserting. The first I caught was sidling through the postern, close by the cave of pain. The next hoisting herself with rope and pulley down. A third on the point of slipping past while well, a fourth malcontent, seated for an instant flight to visit Orsilicus on bird back, I dragged off by the hair in time. But they are all snatching excuses to sneak home. Look, there goes one. Hey, what's the hurry? I must get home. I've some Malaysian wool packed wasting away, and moths are pushing through it. Fine moths indeed, I know. Get back within. By the goddesses, I'll return instantly. I only want to stretch it on my bed. You shall stretch nothing and go nowhere either. Must I never use my wool, then? If needs be. How unfortunate I am for my poor flax that's left at home unstripped. Oh, here's another that wishes to go home and strip her flax. Inside again. No, by the goddess of light, I'll be back as soon as I have flayed it properly. You'll not flay anything. For if you begin, there'll not be one hue who has but a patch to be flayed. Oh, holy Alithia, stay this birth till I have left the precincts of the place. What nonsense is this? I'll drop it any minute. Yesterday you weren't with child. But I am today. Oh, let me find a midwife, Lysistrata. Oh, quickly. Now what story is this you tell? What is this hard lump here? It's a male child. <laughs> By Aphrodite, it isn't. Your belly's hollow, and it is a feel of metal. Well, as you can see, you hussy is Athene's sacred helm, and you said you were with child. And so I am. Then why the helm? So what the throws should take me still in these grounds, I could use it like a dove as a laying nest in which to drop the child. More <laughs> pretexts. You can't hide your clear intent. And anyway, why not wait till the tenth day meditating a brazen name for your brass brat? And I can't sleep a wink. My nerve is gone since I saw that snake sentinel of the shrine. And all of those dreadful owls with their weird hooting. Though I'm worried out, I can't close an eye. You wicked women, cease from juggling lies. You want your men, but one of them as well. They toss us sleepless in the lonely night, I'm sure of it. Hold out a while, hold out, but persevere a teeny weeny longer. An oracle has promised victory if we don't wrangle. Would you hear the words? Yes, yes, yes. 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 What, what is, is it? it? Silence then, you chatterboxes. Here. When as the swallows flocking in one place from the hobos deny themselves love's gambles any more, all woes shall then have ending, and great Zeus the thunderer shall put above what was below before. Will the men that always be kept under us? But if the swallows squabble among themselves and fly away out of the temple, refusing to agree, then the most wanton birds all over the world shall be named forever. That's his decree. It's not and this is what it means. means. Now by all the gods we must let no agony deter us from duty. Back to your quarters. For we are base indeed, my friends, if we betray the oracle. She goes out. I'd like to remind you of a fable I used to employ when I was a little boy. 
How once through fear of the marriage bed a young man, Malanian by the name, to the wilderness ran, and there on the hills he dwelt, for hairs he wove a net, which with his dog he set. Most likely he's there yet, for he never came back home so great as the fear he felt. I loathe the sex as much as he, and therefore I no less shall be as chaste as was Melanian. Grand M, do you much mind, man? Onions you won't need to cry. From my foot you shan't escape. What thick forests I espy. So, so mu much. Maronides, a fief speared, and thundering black back were feared. The foe fled when they were shown. Brave he is for me on. Well, I'll relate the royal fable just to show you a different point of view. There was a rough-hewn fellow, Timon, with a face that cloud and through a thorn bush in a wild, bleak place. He too decided on flight. This very fury sun, all the world ways to shun and hide from everyone, spitting out curses on all the hated men, named to left and right. But though he feared this hate for men, he loved the women even then, and never thought the enemies. Oh, your jaw I'd like to break. That I fear, do you suppose? Learn what kicks my legs can make. Raise them up and you'll expose. Nay, you'll see there I engage. All is well kept despite my age, and tended smooth enough to slip from any adversary's grip. The Sistrata appears. Hello there. Hasten hither to me. Skip fast along. What is this? Why the noise? A man, a man. I spy a frenzied man. He carries love upon him like a staff. A lady of Cyprus, and Kithra, and Paphos. I beseech you, keep your minds and hands to the oath. Where is he? Whoever is he? He's by the temple of Chloe. Yes, now I see him, but who can he be? Look at him. Does anyone recognize his face? I do. He is my husband, Kinesius. You know how to work. Play with him. Lead him on. Seduce him with the cozening points. Kiss him. Kiss him. Then slip your mouth aside just to see sure of it. Ungirdle every caress his mouth feels. And save that the oath upon the bowl was locked. You can rely on me. I'll stay here to help in working up his ardor to his height of vain magnificence. The rest to their quarters. Enter Canasius. Who is this that stands within our lines? I. A man? Too much a man. Then be off at once. Who are you that thus eject me? Guard for the day. By all the gods, then call Mirene hither. So, call Mirene hither. Who are you? I am her husband, Canasius, son of Anthros. Welcome, dear friend. That glorious name of yours is quite familiar in our ranks. Your wife continually has it in her mouth. She cannot touch an apple or an egg, but she must say, This is to Canisius. Oh, is that true? By Aphrodite, it is. If the conversation strikes on men, your wife cuts with all our boobies by Canisius. Then call her here. And what am I to get? This, if you want it. See what I have here, but not to take away. Then I'll call her. Be quick, be quick. All grace is wiped from life since she went away. Oh, sad, sad am I. When I enter on that loneliness, and wine is unvintaged of the sun's flavor, and food is tasteless, but I've put on weight. I love him all so much, but he won't have it. Don't call me down to him. Sweet little Myrne, what do you mean, come here? Oh no, I won't. Why are you calling me? You don't want me. Not want you with this weak old strength of love? Farewell. Don't go. Please don't go, Myrne. At least you'll hear our child. Call your mother, lad. Mommy! 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 There now. Don't you feel pity for the child? He's not been fed or washed for six days. I certainly pity him with so heartless a father. <laughs> Come down, my sweetest. Come for the child's sake. A giant life it is to be a mother. I suppose I better go. She comes down. How much younger she looks, how fresher and how prettier. Mirene, lift up your lovely face, your disdainful face, and your ankle. Though your scorn step out its worst, it only rubs me to more ardor here. Mirene playing with the child. You're as innocent as he in this iniquitous. Let me kiss you, honey petting, Martha darling. How wrong to follow another woman's counsel and let loose all those throbbing voids in yourself. 
as well as in me. Don't you go throb, throb. Take away your hand. Everything in the house has been ruined. I don't care at all. The roosters are picking all your web to rags. Do you mind that? Not I. What time we've wasted. We might have drenched with puffy and laughter, flung on Aphrodite's mysteries. Oh, come here. Not till a treaty finishes the war. If you must have it, then we'll get it done. Do it, and I'll come home. Till then, I am bound. Well, can't your oath perhaps be got around? No, no. So, I'll not say that I don't love you. You love me? Then, dear girl, let me also love you. You must be joking. The boy looking on. Here, Mares, take the child home. There, he's gone. There's nothing in the way now. Come to the point. Here in the open, in plain sight? In Pan's cave, a splendid place. Where shall I dress my hair again before returning to the Sisera? You can easily primp yourself in the Clepsidra. But how can I break my oath? Leave that to me, I'll take the risk. Well, I'll make you comfortable. Don't worry, I'd as soon as lie on the grass. No, by Apollo, in spite of all your faults, I won't have you lying on the nasty earth. From here, Mirene keeps on going off to fetch things. Ah, how she loves me. Rest there on the bench while I'll arrange my clothes. Oh, what a nuisance. I must find some cushions first. Why some cushions? Please, don't get them. What? The plain hot hard wood? Never, by Artemis. That would be too vulgar. Open your arms. No, wait a second. Oh, then hurry back again. Eh? Here's the cushions are. Lying down while I... Oh dear, but what a shame. You need more pillows. I don't want them, dear. But I do. Thwarted affection mine, they treat you just like Heracles at a feast with Danny's of Danny's. Oh, disappointing arms. Raise your head. There. That's everything, at last. Yes, all. Then run to my arms, you golden girl. I'm loosening my girdle now. But you're not forgotten? You're not deceiving me about the treaty? No, by my life, I'm not. Why? You're, you have no blanket. It's not the silly blanket's worth, but yours I want. Never mind. You soon have both. I'll come straight back. The woman will choke me with her coverlets. Get up a moment. I'm up high enough. Would you like me to perfume you? By Apollo, no! By Aphrodite, I'll do it anyway. Lord Zeus, may she soon use up all her s the myrrh. Stress out your arm, take it, and rub it in. Hmm, it's not as fragrant as it might be. That is, not before it's smeared. It doesn't smell of kisses. How silly I am. I brought you Rhodian scent. It's good enough. Leave it, love. You must be jesting. Play wreck the man who first confounded scent. Here, take this flask. I'm a far better one. Don't tease me. Come here and get nothing more. I'm coming. I'm just drawing off my shoes. You sure you will vote for peace? Oh, think about it. She runs off. I'm dead. A woman's worn me all away. <laughs> She's gone and left me with anguish, an anguished pulse. Bald to your, your amorous delight, how, how melancholy, melancholy is your plight. plight. With sympathy your, your case I view, you. for I am I sure it's hard, hard on you. What, what woman being could sustain this unforeseen domestic strain, and, and not a single trace of woman willing, willing in the place. place. Oh Zeus, what throbbing suffering. She did it all, the harlot, she with her atrocious harlotry. Nay, rather call her darling sweet. What? Sweet? She's a rude and wicked, wicked thing. thing. A wicked thing, as I repeat. Oh Zeus, oh Zeus, canst thou not suddenly let loose some twirling hurricane to tear her flapping up along the air, and drop her when she's whirled around, here to the ground, neatly impaled upon the stake? It's ready upright for her sake. He goes out. Enter Spartan Herald. What here gaves the Senate and the Pyrtonese? I fetched dispatches for them. Are you a man or a monstrosity? 
My scrimp-brained lad, I am a herald, as ye see, who have come fra Sparta and enter peace. Then why do you hide your lance that sticks out under your arms? I've brought no lance. Then why do you turn aside and hold your cloak so far out from your body? Is your groin swollen with stress of travelling? By Castor, I'll swear the man is wood. Indeed, your cloak is wide, my rascal fellow. But I tell you no, in our fleering. Well, what is it then? It's my dispatch cane. Of course, a Spartan cane. But speak right out. I know all this too well. Our new privation springing up in Sparta. Our hardest can be in lofty, lusty columns. Our allies stand united. We mon get plained. Whence has this evil come? Is it from Pan? No. Lampedo first ran a sclint, then the others sprinted after her example and blocked the hizzies. Their wames unscathed against our every fleet. What did you do? We are broken and bent double, limp like men carrying lanthorns in great winds about the city. They win and let us even with lightest neef skin their primsy pretties till we've concluded peace terms with a Hellas. So the conspiracy is universal. This proves it. Then return to Sparta. Bid them send envoys with full powers to treat of peace, and I will urge the Senate here to choose plenipotentiary ambassadors as argument inducing this connection. I'm off. Your wisdom none could controvert. They retire. There is no beast, no rush of fire like woman so untamed. She calmly goes her way where even panthers would be shamed. And yet you are fool enough, it seems, to dare the war with me. With a loyal, faithful ally, you might win me easily. Never could the hate I feel for womankind grow less. Then have out your will, will, but I'll, I'll take pity on your, your nakedness. For I can see just how ridiculous you look, and so will help you with your tunic if close by now may go. Well, well, that by Zeus is no scoundrel deed, deed, I frankly will admit. I, I only took, took them off myself in a scandal raging fit. Now you look sensible, and that your, your men no one could doubt. If you were but good friends, friends again, I'd take the insect out that hurts your eye. Is that what's wrong, that nasty, bitey thing? Please squeeze it out and show me what it is that makes this sting. It's been paining me a long while now. Well, I'll agree to that, although you're most unmannerly. What a giant gnat! Here, look, it comes from much you try horses. I can tell. Oh, thank you. It was digging out a veritable well. Now that it's gone, I can't hold back my tears. See how they fall. I'll wipe them off, bad as you are, and kiss you after all. I won't be kissed. Oh, yes, you will. Your wishes do not matter. Oh, bother, I should take you all. How you cajole and flatter. I hell it is to live with you, to live without a hell. How truly was that said? But come, come these enmities, enmities let's quell. You, you stop, stop from giving orders, and I'll stop from doing wrong. So, so let's join ranks and seal our bargain with, with a choric song. Athenians, it's not our intention to sow political dissension by, by giving any scandal mention, but on the contrary, to promote good feeling in the state. By word and deed, we've had enough calamities of late. So let a man or woman by divulge, they need a trifle, say. Two minutes, three or four, I've purses here that bulge. There's only one condition made, indulge my whim in this I pray. When peace is signed once more, on no account am I to be repaid. And I'm making preparation for a gay select collation. With some youths of reputation, I've managed to produce some soup, and they're slaughtering for me a suckling pig. Its flesh should taste as tender as could be. I shall expect you at my house today. To the baths make an early visit, and bring your children along. Don't dawdle on the way. Ask no one. Enter as if the place was all your own. Yours henceforth it is. If nothing chances wrong, the door will then be shut, bang in your face. The Spartan ambassadors approach. Here, here come, come the Spartan envoys with long, worried beards. Hail, Hail Spartans, how, how do you fare? Did, did anything new arise? No, no need for words. Do you yes, see our condition? condition? 
The situation swells to greater tension. Something will explode soon. It's awful, truly. But come, let us with the best speed we may scribble a piece. I noticed, I noticed that, that our men, like wrestlers poised for contest, hold their, hold their clothes up from, from their bellies, an athlete's malady, since exercise alone can bring relief. Can, can anyone, anyone tell us where this is? There's, There's no, no need, need to describe our men's condition. condition. It shows up plainly enough. It's, it's the same disease. Do you feel a jerking, throbbing in the morning? By Zeus, yes! <laughs> These straits I'm racked all through. Unless peace is soon declared, we shall be driven in the void of women to try Clistodnes. Be wise and cover those things with your tunics. Who knows what kind of person may perceive you? By Zeus, you're right. By the twelve goddesses, indeed you are. Let us put our tunics on. Hail, all oh, my fellow sufferers. Hail, Spartans. Oh, How can it, darling? What a wonderful thing! If they see, see us with our laughing wallies, tell us then, Spartans, what, what is brought, brought you here? We, we come to trade a pace. Well spoken in there, and, and we the same. Let us call out Lysistrata, since she alone can sell the peace terms. Call out Lysistrata too, if you don't mind. No, indeed, she hears your voices and she comes. Enter Lysistrata. Hail, wonder of all women, now you must be in turn hard, shifting, clear, deceitful, noble, crafty, sweet, and stern. The foremost men of Hellas, smitten by your fascination, have brought their tangled quarrels here for your sole arbitration. An easy task if the love's raging homesickness doesn't start trying out how well each other will serve instead of us. But I know at once if they do. Oh, where's that girl? Reconciliation. Bring first before me the Spartan delegates, and see you lift no rude or violent hands, none of the curlish ways our husbands used, but lead them courteously, as women should, and if they grudge fingers, guide them by other methods, and introduce them with ready tact. The Athenians drop at whatever offers you a grip. Now, Spartans, stay here with me. Hear you, Athenians. Both hearken to my words. I am a woman, but I am not a fool. And what of natural intelligence I have is filled with has been filled out with the remembered precepts of my father and the city elders taught me. First I reproach you both sides equally when at Pylai and Olympia, at Pytho and many other shrines that I could name. You sprinkle from one cup the altars common to all Hellenes, yet you rack Hellenic cities, bloody Hellas with the deaths of her own sons, while yonder clangs the gathering menace of barbarians. We cannot, cannot hold it in much longer now. Now unto you, O Spartans, do I speak. Do you forget how your own countryman, Pericletius, once came hither suppliant before our altars, pale in his purple robes, praying for an army when in Messenia danger growled and the sea god made earth quiver? Then with four thousand hoplites, Chimon marched and saved all Sparta. Yet base ingrates now, you're, you're ravaging the soil with your preservers. By Zeus, they do great wrong, Lysistrata. Great wrong indeed! Oh, what a luscious wench! And now I turn to the Athenians. Have you forgotten, too, how once the Spartans, in days when you wore slavish tunics, came, and with their spears broke the Thessalian host, and all the partitions of Hippias? They alone stood by your soldier on that day. They freed you so that for the slave's short skirt you should wear the cl trailing cloak of liberty. Oh, I've, I've never seen, seen a nobler woman, woman anywhere. before. Nor I was with such prettily jointed hips. hips. Now, brethren trined with mutual benefactions, can you still war? Can you suffer such disgrace? Will you not be friends? What is there to prevent you? We agree, we gentlemen. Again, we get this tempting mold. mold. Which one? That thing we've wanted, wanted to get into for all the time. Pilots, of course. By Poseidon, never. never. Give it up. Then what, what will, will we do? do? We, we need, need that ticklish place united to us. Ask for some other lurking hole in return. Then I will we'll choose, choose this snug thing, thing here. Echinus, shall we call the nestling spot and this backside haven these desirable twin promenades, the Malik, and of course these my and legs. Not that, that oh, surely, surely not, not that, that, never that. that. Agree, now what are two legs more or less? I, I want, want to strip, strip at once and plow my land. 
and mine I want to fertilize at once. And so, so you can when peace is once declared. If you mean it, get your allies' heads together and come to some decision. What, what allies? allies? There's, There's no, no distinction in our politics. politics. We've risen, risen as one man to this conclusion. conclusion. Every, Every ally is jumping mad to drive it home. And ours, ours the, the same for sure. sure. The, the Christians first, I'll add on that. that. I agree with all of you. Now off and cleanse yourselves for the Acropolis, for we invite you all into a supper with our commissariat baskets. There at table you will pledge a good behavior and uprightness, that each man's wife is his to hustle home. Come, Come as, as quickly, quickly as possible. possible. As, as quick, quick as you like, lead on. on. Oh, Zeus, Zeus, quick, quick, quick lead, lead quickly on. on. They hurry off. Broidered stuffs on high I'm keeping, fashionable cloaks and sweeping, trains not even gold gods keeping. Take them all, I pray you, take them all, I do not care. And deck your children, your daughter, for the basket she's to bear. Come, every one of you, come in and take of this rich hoard to share. Knots tied so skillfully, but you and seal can break. And plunder all you spy inside, I've laid out all that I can spare. And therefore you will see, nothing less than I, your sharper eye. If lacking corn a man should be, while his slaves clamor hungrily, and his excessive progeny, and I have a handful of grain at home which is always to be had. And to which, in fact, a more than life-size loaf I'd gladly add. They let the poor bring with them bag or sack, and take this store of food. Mine is my man, I'll tell, to help them all to pack. Their wallets full, but oh, take care, I have forgotten. Don't intrude, or terrified you'll yell. My dog is hungry too, and bites beware. Some loungers from the market with torches approach the banqueting hall. The porter bars their entrance. Open the door. Here, move along. What's this? You're sitting down. Shall I sign you with the, my torch? That vulgar. Oh, I couldn't do it. Yet, if it would gratify the audience, I'll modify myself. And I will too. We'll both be crude and vulgar. Yes, we will. Be off at once now, or you'll be waiting dirges for your hair. Get off at once, and see you don't disturb the Spartans' envoys, just coming out from the splendid feast they've had. The banqueters begin to come out. I've never known such a pleasant banquet before. The way the delightful fellows the Spartans are. We are warm with wine. How wise we are. That's only fair. Since sober, we're such fools. This is the advice I'd give the Athenians. See, our ambassadors are always drunk and friendly for when we visit Sparta sober. Then we're on the alert for trickery all the while, so that we miss half of the things they say and misinterpret things that were never said, and then report the muddle back to Athens. But now we're charmed with each other. They might cap with a telemon catch instead of the Clytagora, and we'd applaud and praise them just the same. We're not too scrupulous in weighing words. Why, here the rascals come again to plague me. Won't you move on, you sorry loafers there? Yes, by yes, Zeus. They're already coming out. Now, now dearest, dearest, please tie up your pipe, that I may try a spring and sing my best in honor all the Athenians on our walls. I take your pipe, by all the gods, there's nothing could glad my heart more than to watch you dance. Lizzie, let thy fire storm these yonkers over the tongue with stormy ecstasy. My muse that knows all deeds and nows, how when it see the navy swooped upon, the maids are timidly hung. Gods for their courage did they strike, wrenching a triumph for their foes. While at Thermopylae, Leonidas armor stood, while bowls they were like wild bowls that with threat, threat, the terrible tusks wet, the sweat ran streaming down each twisted face. In blossoming air spring, petals of death, panted fiery mortal breath, the sweat drenched out of their bodies in that place, for the holy burial of Persians glittered more, the sands on the shore. Come, hunting girl, hear my prayer, you whose arrows whiz in woodlands calm and bless, there's we swear. Let us be fenced with age long enmity, and let his bonds together firm through the day. In heaven they happiness, and it's worth no gal food perjury the same. Oh, hither, hither, oh, oh, wild wood queen. 
Earth is delighted now. Peace is the voice of the earth. Spartans, sort out your wives. Athenians, yours. Let each catch hands with his wife and dance his joy. Dance out his thanks. Be grateful in music and promise reformation with his heels. O oh, oh, dancers for lead out the graces. Call Artemis out, then a brother, the dancer of the skies, that gracious Apollo, invoke with a shout, Dionysus, out of whose eyes breaks fire on the minds of Apollo, and Zeus with his flares a quick lightning, and call, happy Hera, queen of all, and all the diamond sun and the hither be, witnesses of our revelry, and of the noble peace we have made, Aphrodite, I to thee, I cry, for victory, leap, I I I I give us the music for our latest sang, leap in the gang, lovely, lofty, tag at us, fill our spun news, it will to greet us, and will our current voices to rise, O unclean hollow prize, and tend us gallant sons whose days along the earth as banks merely pass, and often o'er the house of brass. Now the dance begin, dance making swell your friends your holy skin, while we join voices in their spot of their rejoices. Ah, beautiful sun, and loves to say, so tangled beautifully. The girls of the ranks, along your rotos banks, like Wanti's Philly song, followed there, and like Parkantis stinking through the wild air, to come a giddy laughter through the air. The country is a cliff, the sea is a swift, the star a clip, islands shall the light of calm, the holy nimble graceful queen, lead thou the dance, gather thy joyous dresses up in bonds, and play like a fun, to man them, clap the hands, sing praise to the warrior goddess, temple the islands, are thou so brass.